is happening, people? It is Brian Alls, never say that com, and today we're going to talk about deloads. Now, I know a lot of people don't even know what a deload is, so I'm going to be covering the how, the what, the when, the why, the all of that. But basically, a deload is nothing more than a break for your body, for your CNS, for your mind, from the grind of your program, the last nine, ten weeks of your program, whatever you're working, you take a little bit of break before you go and you have a big culminating event, whether that be a strongman competition, a powerlifting meet, going for PRs, or whatever the case may be. You take a little break so that you come back stronger. I want you guys kind of think about this like you're playing a video game. You guys know, like when you play like one of those big epic video games, like a Zelda type game, and you get to the big boss, and if your hearts are already depleted, if your life bar is already depleted, you need to do something to replenish that before you go face the big challenge. This is the same exact thing that you're doing. You're dealing with the grind of your program for however many weeks that you did it, and now you're ready to face the big boss, you're ready to test, you're ready to prove that all of that grind was not spent in vain, that it's all was worth it, and it's all gonna show up right now. So in order to do that, you wanna face that boss with as much life as you possibly can, and that's exactly what a deload is going to do for you. Now how long and how you choose to perform the deload is gonna vary greatly on a couple things. Number one, your experience level. Number two, what type of program you're running, and number three, what the actual event that you're going to go do is. Because it's gonna be different for a strongman competition where you had to have more cardio, as opposed to like a powerless competition where you're gonna be more static. So the deloads may change a little bit depending on what demands you're gonna be placing on your body for that big culminating event. Now when I say that your experience level may change how you deload, basically what I'm saying is how quickly do you become untrained? Now the idea of untrained is if someone has been doing squats for 20 years of their life, I'm pretty sure they have some cues and some motor patterns ingrained in there. So it's kind of like riding a bike for them. When they come back, if they take five to 10 days off for a deload and they come back to the squat, I'm pretty sure their body is not gonna forget what the heck it's doing when it comes to squatting. However, if the cues are still fuzzy or the squat is still kind of a foreign object in your head that you need to think about a lot before you get under the bar, then chances are, more likely than not, you're gonna get detrained faster, which just means you're gonna forget a lot of your cues, a lot of those basic motor patterns. Those are gonna be gone with a much shorter amount of time than someone who's practiced it for 20 years. Obviously. That one took a lot of brains to figure out. So for most athletes, the dealer period falls somewhere between five and 10 days. Now what you're gonna be doing during that time is gonna be drastically different depending on what your experience is. Now I can already hear some people saying, dude, if I stop lifting weights for 10 days, I'm gonna get weaker, I'm gonna, it's all gonna fall apart. No, it isn't. The body doesn't really work that way. It will actually come back stronger. What is going a little crazy during that 10 days would be your mind. And you better learn to control that thing before that just demolishes everything. The reason my experience matters when it comes to the deloads, because typically, if you are more experienced, for the most part, it means that you're gonna be a little bit stronger. So a 230 pound man and a 200 pound man as far as their actual musculature and their frame and everything is concerned, it's really not that much different. However, if that 230 pound man is deadlifting 800 pounds and squatting 750 pounds, while the 200 pound man is deadlifting 350 and squatting 300 pounds, the training effect is gonna be drastically different because the human body isn't that much different, but the demands are. So the deload is going to have to look much different for the guy who is deadlifting 800 compared to the guy who is deadlifting 350. So how long and what type of deload you're gonna be running is ultimately gonna be up to you because I do not know what has gone on for the past 10 weeks, much less the past 10 years or whatever your lifting career is. Now I do include deloads in my longer personalized programs, the 10 weeks and the 12 weeks, simply because I get to see exactly, I know exactly what you You've done for the last nine weeks and then I get a questionnaire explaining your past history, competition history, where you're at, where your maxes are, where your weak points are and it gives me a much better idea of how to actually give someone an appropriate DLO but if you do not have that option then you're going to have to do a lot of trial and error and trust me you're going to be going for PRs probably for the rest of your life so don't get too stressed out if you do not know exactly right now the best way to deload and test because that is going to come but I am going to give you guys four different options of ways that you can deload that should help you out and give you a little bit of an idea of when, where, how so hopefully you guys can come in break some PRs do awesome at your meet or do awesome at your strongman competition. Now for most of you I want you to reprogram how you think of a deload in your mind Instead of looking at it as rest, if you are in that kind of beginner intermediate stage, I want you to look at your deload as more of a reprogramming. So that's going to be the week where you get to drop the weight back. You're not so concerned about how horrible things feel on your body. You're more concerned about doing things technically correct, picking out your three cues that you're going to be using during your testing week, and just burying those things in and working them and working them and working them. Just getting those reps, getting that technique down so that next week when the stakes are high and it is heavy and it feels terrible on your back and you're nervous and all those things are going on, you are not going to be focused on all your feelings, you're going to be focused on what you practiced and that is what you're going to build during this deload week. So if you are one of those individuals who still needs to be working their technique a little bit, which I'm included in that, 
If you're still one of those individuals, these are three different ways that you can deload that will definitely help you out. All right, so the very first one, this one's gonna be especially good if you need to cut a little bit of weight prior to uh, your actual competition that you're deloading for. So you're gonna load a bar to 50% of your one rep maximum, then every minute on the minute for 10 minutes, you're gonna perform three reps, okay? So let's just take squats, for example. Basically, that means you have 10 opportunities to get into the bar. If there is one thing that I see people mess up, whether they send me the form check videos or PR videos, or whatever the case may be, the one thing that everyone always messes up is they rush their setup and their walkout, or their setup and their um, rack, or their setup and everything. That is always rushed, and that is what makes you get the PR or not get the PR, guys. That is building your foundation. If you rush the foundation of your house, you're not gonna have a good house. That is the most important area, so you need to work those things. So, this is gonna give you 30 opportunities, or I guess 10 opportunities, to walk up, practice your setup, practice your walkout, practice getting set, know your three cues, set them up, go over it again and again and again and again. This is only gonna take you 10 minutes, so I would encourage you, if you do need to cut weight, then you throw a little bit of intense conditioning at the end, probably about 10 minutes, and then you are good to go. You do that for your four big exercises, and you're good to go for your meet on whatever Saturday you're going for it. And a second option for those of us like myself who need a lot of technique work for that setup and that walkout, you're still gonna keep the bar at 50%. Guys, you're never gonna go heavy during your deload week because it's a chance for your body and your CNS to recover. So we're always gonna be right around 50%. So 50% of your one rep maximum, then every 30 seconds for 30 minutes, you have 60 total reps, you're gonna be doing singles. So you're testing on singles. I'm guessing that you're not doing a five rep max deadlift test. I'm guessing you're doing a one rep max deadlift test. So if you're doing singles, if you're gonna be testing singles, then you practice like you play and you need to be working those singles. Now. It is very, very important for you to kind of get in there, work your setup, work your walkout, but then also focus on your cues and ingrain them so that next week when all that pressure is on you and the weight's heavy and you're nervous and it means something to you and all those things, make sure that those cues are completely ingrained in your head so that when those feelings start creeping in, you can push them out and say, no time for feelings, I have a job to do, I need to execute, there's nothing else about it, nothing personal feelings, but this is not your time, my time is about executing and getting it done, and that's exactly what you're building right now, it's like a puppy, you're teaching it exactly what you want it to do, so that when the heat goes up, I guess, uh, it'll be there. Yeah. That's a pretty good catch, proud of that one. Which brings us to number three, which is working up to a single at 70% using small jumps. So. 70% should not be that taxing of a weight for you. It should be right around that weight where things start to get a little bit more serious, where you need to start paying a little bit more attention, staying focused. However, uh, working up to it should not really hurt your CNS that much, it should not tire you out too much, and you're only doing singles, but this is another opportunity for you to make small jumps and then just kind of add plates. And I'm talking small plates, so if you're working up to like a 600 pound squat, maybe you add 10s. Every once in a while, 25s, but you're making small jumps, hitting singles, so you're still getting 30 to 50 reps of singles, working your way up. Just again, trying to focus on your cues, focus on exactly what you're gonna be doing the following week, and this is just an opportunity to kind of change the weights a little bit so it's less monotonous. Yeah, and option number four is you can choose to do nothing, which is what I choose to do for all of my deloads. So seven to 10 days prior to my strongman competition, I will do nothing. I literally come in the gym, if I need to cut weight, I might do some cardio, uh, some conditioning, or some weighted vest walking, but that's about it, guys. I literally do nothing. I don't get untrained very fast. Uh, all that stuff's kind of worked into my brain pretty good, and because I work strongman, we are moving heavy weights virtually every single day, so the deload needs to be more extreme because the CNS demands are more extreme during our grind for that nine, 10 weeks of programming. It's just, it's more intense, so we need more downtime. Or at least that's what I tell myself when I'm sitting on my couch doing nothing. Glorious! And that's what I personally do, guys. I only deload before a strongman competition. I don't deload before PRs. I don't deload before anything else. There, there's nothing else. It's only strongman competitions. Every once in a while, I will take a deload week or an off week, and that's simply because I'm just so beat up. Uh, but I know a lot of people read 531 that Jim Wendler wrote, and I respect absolutely everything Jim Wendler said. Uh, however, I think Jim, when he was writing that, kind of had more of the power lifter who was moving heavy weights with that in mind um, when he wrote 531 and talked about doing a deload every, after every single wave. For the average person who's benching 300 pounds, you do not need to deload every three weeks. You need to deload maybe two, three times a year. That, that's literally about it. Uh, you're not putting that much stress on your body. So 
Uh, you need to deload much less often. I usually deload three to four times a year because I compete about three to four times a year, but that's, that's virtually it, guys. That's, that's all the time I take off. I do not, I'm not a fan of people who wanna take off during the middle of a training cycle. I don't think that's a good idea. If you wanna get through a training cycle and then deload before your PRs, I think that is an excellent idea. It's not something that I personally do because my PRs do not mean as much to me as doing well in my competition, so, um, I'd rather do the training. Now, if you guys do end up taking off every fourth week, like, uh, like they recommend in 531, if you take off every single fourth week, then literally you're taking almost two months of training out of your programming. The lights just went off. So, like I said, guys, it's gonna be a lot of trial and error. You're gonna be doing this for a long time. So, if rather than just doing the same old thing, try something new during your deload. Try something new during your testing and see if it works better. Because who knows, maybe there's a better way out there for you, but one thing is for sure, you will always be stronger if you take a deload, whether it be one of the options that I gave or doing absolutely nothing, but your body needs rest. You need to trust the fact that you ground out for 10 weeks all your programming, you just worked and worked and worked and worked. You need to trust the fact that the hay is in the barn. You are not gonna get weaker over a five day span where you do less work and then you go into your testing. You will actually come out stronger. Your CNS recovery, you're gonna feel like a million bucks. You're gonna to want to deload literally every three weeks is pretty much what you're gonna to wanna to do, but you, you can't really do that. Anyway guys, I know a lot of you have been asking about this, so I do hope it was helpful. I enjoyed doing it, I hope you enjoyed watching it. I will catch up with you later in the week, but until I do, go out to something amazing with your eyes, keep working hard people, be nice to each other, and I'll see you then.